Okay, so let's look at the inverse relationship that's present. Okay, one Planck length, two Planck length equals an electron. Okay, then we have four Planck lengths equals two electrons, which equals a photon. Then we have eight Planck lengths equals four electrons, which equals two photons, which equals hydrogen. Now hydrogen can be A symmetry well first element of the periodic table or symmetry which is quantum So this symmetry state is zero mass and zero charge. But it does exist. Where every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The balance of opposites. So I'm going to show you some videos where we can see this in action. Very strange to watch. I'll slow it down and I will actually show you where the photons are actually jumping at right angles. So the light is being driven by a, a reaction system that I've developed and looked under the microscope and then observed strange phenomena. Okay, It's a quantum fluid that I've been generating in order to study uh, quantum mechanics in real time. Uh, in a liquid system at room temperature. So no need to do quantum entanglement using Bose-Einstein condensates at very low temperatures. This is room temperature superconductivity that I'm generating. Um, I will be discussing how I'm doing that and why I've done it this way. And then we can uh, start to build the model that I'm generating. So we're going to look at the orbital G now um, in relation to the table. 
So I'm just going to start looking at the s orbitals. So s equals sphere, okay, where you have a radius, you have circumference, so 2 pi r. You have an area equals pi r squared. And we also have a volume, okay, which equals 4, 3 pi r cubed. So let's just concentrate on this one for a second, okay. So I showed previously how the geometry of Einstein's equation can be written in the form of m equals e divided by c squared, where we also know that two bodies, m1, m2, and the distance between them is r squared, okay? So we've got a formula for gravity of m1 times m2 divided by r squared, okay? So the force between these things is proportional to this gravitational relationship, okay? Which is actually quantified with c squared equaling r squared, so that this formula is actually proportional to this. Okay, so we know that the area can be written as pi equals area divided by r squared. So it's multiplication here, uh, it's therefore division, area divided by r squared equals pi. Again, that structure of r squared equals c squared can be substituted at pi equals area divided by c squared. Okay, so we know if r is c, and that is also c, then what we have is c squared. So the geometry of light can be understood in the form of a sphere. So you both have a concave and a convex surface. Where at this point, light can go out. At this point, light can go in. So concave, convex concepts are also understood in the geometry of a sphere. S orbital, sphere. We now have some relationships that we can see with regarding charge, uh, gravity, um, area, and the geometry of Einstein's equation interrelating to the geometry of s orbital structure of hydrogen. So here we have uh, 1s. 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, 7s. The nucleus. Depending on temperature, pressure, um, the position of the electrons in that geometric state, which we can draw as a target, like a dartboard. Okay. Now, we're going to look 
at the geometry of hydrogen, but in a symmetry state, in that quantum state, rather than the asymmetry state. So what we're going to do is place four electrons in a position. Okay, one, two, three, four. So in a flat geometry, what they can do is go from one to another. Okay, and then these. So what is happening here is from this center point, there is a change in distance, and that distance is symmetrical. So when the light comes in, or a photon, which is two electrons, the wavelength is the distance between The electrons. Okay, that's the lambda wavelength. What we can see is that within the structure of the atom itself, in the symmetry state of hydrogen, we have this geometry where, depending on the wavelength, it corresponds to the distance between the orbitals, then it can provide energy to allow the electrons to jump and extend out in both directions. Okay. So in symmetry, there is no loss or gain of energy. The light of these electrons comes in and provides the ability, depending on the wavelength, to between the structures, a symmetry state. Okay. So by looking at that state of symmetry within the atom, you can retain the concepts of wavelengths okay. wavelengths of light between the paired electrons and their geometry. Okay. That is important when looking at c squared equals e divided by m, where e is an electron and m is an electron, and that's the generation of light. <coughs> Remember, these can jump back. And release the, that distance corresponding to lambda or a photon. So photons of light can interact to make electrons jump from one orbital to another, but also to come back to the other orbitals releasing the photon of light at that wavelength. So this is a symmetry-based model based on a spherical structure of S1 orbitals. So what I found really quite fascinating is if I took that as the point light source and shone it through this point light, I would get a, a secondary point. If I do that, I get another one here, another one here, and another one here. So here is 2s, okay? So we know that 1s fills first, 2s, so where is the p orbitals? Okay, so if you go
So, is it that one, that one, and this one, um, this one, this one, and there's one there, and so we've got that one. So I'll just rub out some other stuff. can see what I'm getting at. So what we have is a nucleus. We have one, two, three, four. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So what is actually happening is the geometry that I'm creating, or at least hypothesizing and, and putting forward as a potential structure, provides four, twelve, or sixteen. So we have a geometry of 16 based on inverse square law relationships. So the distance from here to here versus the distance from here to here, okay, that's 1n, 2n, or is it n squared? That's 1 squared. Squared and then it's etc. Okay, so four squared, six squared, eight squared. I look at stable numbers due to the attributes of even versus odd. So we have a potential structure for helium as a geometric stable form based on inverse square law relationships. Okay, so we have p orbitals, s orbitals, and just looking at it as electrons in the supersymmetry model. Okay, so now we can extend that. Okay, again, nucleus. One, two, three, four. And I'm not drawing this to scale. Okay, let's let's go one, two, three, four. Okay. And then this goes to here, this one to here, then this one to here, and this one to here, this one to here, this one to here, this one to here. And that one to here. Okay, so we have that geometry. Now repeat it, repeat it again. Okay, because the periodic table has the periodicity of uh, one, four, sixteen, sixteen, thirty-two, thirty-two, sixty-four, sixty-four. Okay, so that's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are the seven layers of the periodic table and the symmetry that's occurring within it. 